Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to another uh, of my 1970s series of the week. Uh, this one I'd like to focus on uh, the little gothic romance and horror. Uh, they have the uh, Dark Mansion of Forbidden Love. Now this actually, uh, they split it up into two titles, or they actually continued it under another title. So the first, uh, I think, four or five issues, let me see, probably... Yeah, the first four issues were uh, Dark Mansion of Forbidden Love, and uh, 5 through 15 were uh, Forbidden Tales of Dark Mansion. So I just thought I'd kind of go through and uh, and show these. Now, I had a, uh, probably had scattered issues, probably at least half of them uh, already, and probably have a couple of... Uh, of the early ones like number one and maybe number two or three in, in fairly high grade but I found a good deal on the whole set a couple weeks ago and it was just kind of hard to pass up. Now all these are probably uh, mid-grade to maybe a little bit higher uh, nothing you know nothing near mint in here but still pretty nice looking books and uh, I got them for a real good deal so like I say it was kind of hard to pass. So uh, here's issue number one and I'd never heard of the guy that did the the cover on this but is a guy named George Zeal and I don't know if he was a painter or a comic artist or what, but uh, actually uh, I'd never heard of him. It was really a pretty cool cover. Actually, I uh, got some interiors by uh, Tony DeZuniga, and uh, there's actually a Wes Craven text story inside this one, so I thought that was pretty interesting. So there we have Dark Mansion of Forbidden Love, number one. And number two, you have a uh, Joe Orlando cover which uh, I thought was pretty good and uh, more Tony DeZuniga art on the inside and uh, I think actually some uh, Don Heck art in these early issues There's number two not a bad looking copy uh, number three it was covered by Jeff Jones I really like that one it's probably the uh, roughest condition wise of the whole run uh, I got some issues in that top corner there a little bit of browning but uh, overall you know a decent uh, decent copy like I say I wasn't really that worried about condition I just kind of wanted wanted the whole run for a while and I just had some scattered issues uh, another really cool cover at number four uh, it's actually Nick Carty uh, and this got some art in it by Ernie Chan and uh, Vince Coletta I think Coletta might have inked Ernie Chan which is kind of odd, uh, but pretty cool nonetheless. Now these first five issues are the 52-page uh, Giants for 25 cents. I always loved the era of DC. Uh, and number five here, it goes into the title, Forbidden Tales of Dark Mansion. Another cool Nick Carty cover. Uh, I think probably more Don Heck art in this one. I think most of these was probably uh, like one story like uh, 37 or 38 pages and maybe a few little things uh, text pieces and like one page stories other than that but a pretty cool cover and this is probably one of my favorite covers of the run and to me at first glance it looks like Bernie Wrightson and uh, actually it's Alan Weiss and, uh, but I really love this cover I guess I kind of thought rights and because of the creatures, you know, on the left. But you can kind of see, I don't know, on the edge or you can see Alan Weiss's signature maybe. If I can get it in the shot. There you see it, Alan Weiss. But a really cool cover. On number six. And the cool thing about the, this issue... It's actually got a story by uh, Jack Kirby and Mike Rohr that was in, supposed to be slated uh, for Spirit World number two. Now, those of you that know about the, the two short-lived magazines that Kirby did in the early 70s for DC, he did Spirit World and the, in the Days of the Mob, and there's actually a story in there that was slated for issue two of uh, Spirit World. So I thought that was pretty cool. Also got a story in there from uh, Mike Friedrich, the writer, and uh, Jose Delbo. Really cool issue. 
And now we start getting into some of the Mike Kaluta covers, some of my favorites. There's the issue number seven. And I think most of these have got like, uh, as far as like the introduction or the front piece, it's uh, all Kaluta. Got one page of Kaluta art on the inside. But this has got uh, Howard Chaikin art, some Tony DeZuniga. Uh, Wynn Mortimer did some art in this one. Pretty cool cover. Another clue to cover on number eight. Got some uh, Ernie Chan art on the inside. And I think this is around the time that DC started using a lot of the uh, Filipino artists. And uh, so you got uh, Tony DeZuniga. You got, uh, I think there's another guy called Enrico Patricio or Santiago. Uh, and a lot of these, probably all these guys you would see later on, like in House of Mystery and Unexpected and House of Secrets and Secrets of Sinister House and, and all that, you know, they were used uh, pretty widely in uh, DC's mystery books. Uh, but in issue A here, you got another Mike Kaluta cover, Ernie Chan, uh, and uh, probably one of my all-time favorite artists, Alex Nino, with a story in this one. Okay, number nine with a great Neil Adams cover. Uh, more Kaluta on the inside. And more of the, the Filipino connection. Uh, Jess Ramos, Ernesto Patricio, and Alfredo Alcala. Another favorite of mine. Stories in this one. I'm taking it from their reaction that she is not, therefore, beautiful. <laughs> okay, number ten. Another Nick Carty cover. Got some more Alfredo Alcala art. And a couple of guys I think I'd never heard of. Uh, Al Bastier and Bill Payne, whoever that is. That one's a little bit rougher shape. It's got a corner missing, but otherwise... Uh, like I said, I wasn't going for near mint on the whole run. Race. I just wanted to have it. Uh, Ben Tales of Dark Mansion number 11. That's a Jack Sparling cover who did a lot of work for DC back in the 60s, some of the 70s. Got some more Alfredo Alcala art on the inside. Uh, Wynn Mortimer, uh, Mortimer, excuse me. And uh, for you Charlton fans, I know my buddy Steve and a few others know this name. Uh, got some artwork by Pam in this one. Pete Marisi. So pretty cool there. I think I had an, a, another copy of this one because I think it's good because it's got a little issue in the top corner with a crease. But uh, number 12, another Nick Carty cover. Got more uh, Nino art on the inside. Got uh, some Mike Zakowski art. Uh, who did a big run on the Justice League. And I think you have a page by Sergio Arjones in this one too, so that's pretty cool. Okay, another favorite cover of the run, uh, number 13. Uh, this is actually a Kaluta cover, but at first glance, I thought it was Mike Pluke because it kind of got that gloppy, uh, you know, kind of thing going on. And, it, and if it, it really, it uh, it looks like a Pluke cover, and I'm not really sure that Pluke did any work for DC. But uh, the man who waxed and waned, but this is actually a uh, Mike Kaluta cover. You can see the uh, the signature right there. But I thought it was a pretty neat cover. Okay, number 14, another Nick Carty cover. Oh, and uh, on this one, something interesting too. Uh, as far as the interior art, you have a, uh, got some more Alfredo Alcala in this one. And uh, for my buddy John, who is a huge Gil Kane fan, uh, you have some Gil Kane art inked by Wayne Howard, who uh, did a whole lot of work for Charlton on the mystery titles. So it's kind of a, you know, and I, I'd read the issue before, but I went back and looked at that story again. It's kind of an interesting uh, art combination. I mean, you can see a lot of Gil Kane and a lot of Wayne Howard both in that story. So uh, I thought that was a pretty cool uh, part of that issue. Okay, winding down here, you got number 14, another Nick Carty cover. 
uh, got interior art by Sal Amanoa, Dan Green, uh, Rico Rival, another one of those great Filipino guys, uh, George Evans, and uh, Al Milgram. Okay, last issue here, uh, more Nick Cardi. On the interiors, you got some Howard Chaikin, Alex Nino, uh, Jerry Taylock, uh, who did a lot of the mystery stuff for DC, and uh, Dan Green. So, a uh, pretty uh, interesting little title. Uh, I think this first came out like in uh, September of 71. And, well, the first four issues of uh, Dark Mansion and ran until about uh, March, April of 72. And then it really, there wasn't any lag time in between when it changed titles to uh, Forbidden Tales of Dark Mansion because it started in May of 72 and ran until about February, March of uh, 74. So I got all those great uh, 20 cent covers. You got some of the 52 page giants for 25 cents. So, uh, you know, anybody in, that's uh, interested in the gothic romance and uh, horror and mystery, uh, a lot of great covers, a lot of great stories and artists, uh, highly recommend this title. And uh, glad you guys could stick around with me. Appreciate all the comments and the views. And uh, as always, onward and upward.